Chapter 54. Leo. It took a few minutes for that to settle in. Then the other Hephaestus camper started asking questions all at once. Who were the other four demigods? How long would it take to build the boat? Why didn't everyone get to go to Greece? Heroes! Chiron struck his hoof on the floor. All the details are not clear yet, but Leo is correct. He will need your help to build the Argo too. It is perhaps the greatest project Cabin 9 has ever undertaken, even greater than the Bronze Dragon. It'll take a year at least, Nisa guessed. Do we have that much time? You have six months at most, Chiron said. You should sail by summer solstice, when the god's power is strongest. Besides, we evidently cannot trust the wind gods, and the summer winds are the least powerful and easiest to navigate. You dare not sail any later, or you may be too late to stop the giants. You must avoid ground travel, using only air and sea, so this vehicle is perfect. Jason, being the son of the sky god... His voice trailed off, but Leo figured Chiron was thinking about his missing student, Percy Jackson, the son of Poseidon. He would have been good on this voyage, too. Jake Mason turned to Leo. Well, one thing's for sure. You are now senior counselor. This is the biggest honor the cabin has ever had. Anyone object? Nobody did. All his cabin mates smiled at him, and Leo could almost feel their cabin's curse breaking, their sense of hopelessness melting away. It's official, then, Jake said. You're the man. For once, Leo was speechless. Ever since his mom died, he'd spent his life on the run. Now he'd found a home and a family. He'd found a job to do. And as scary as it was, Leo wasn't tempted to run. Not even a little. Well, he said at last, if you guys elect me leader, you must be even crazier than I am. So let's build a spanking hot war machine.